I need to get re-upped for my CISSP and that is part of the DOD 8570. Do you give me time off for it? Do you pay for it? Do you pay for the travel? Those are benefits that really change depending on what company you're part of. I guess I'm supposed to be talking now, aren't I? Hi, I'm Kathleen. Well, hi, Kathleen. I'm Rachel. (laughs) Always great to have you here, Rachel. So, listeners, welcome to our podcast bonus edition on negotiating your salary and benefits. Talking about money can always be very awkward for many of us, but we want you to get your full value. So we're sharing our top tips for success. Rachel, let's kick it off. I would love to. My first tip for everyone is that you need to remember that your salary and benefits combine to form your total compensation. So when you get that offer when you're reviewing it, there's more to consider than just that base number. While pay bands for some contracts are tight, the employer has leeway when it comes to other benefits, which may be of great value for you. Consider the whole enchilada, not just the salary piece of compensation. Think about the bonuses, the health care, the 401k contributions, tuition reimbursement and assistance, time off, take it, stock, lifestyle benefits, and so much more. Our next tip, be ready to have this compensation conversation up front. And this is a tip that a lot of people discuss at many of the transition courses and others. It used to be that a lot of people say, don't talk about compensation until way, way, way at the end. Sorry, that's not the way it is these days. You may receive a call from a recruiter tomorrow before you've even applied for a job. Have you given any thought to what your compensation requirements are? You need to do this on the front end of your job search process and determine what's important for you and if you have a family, what's important for you and your family so you're not caught off guard. Ask if the contract that you're being hired for has an escalation clause allowing for salary increases and whether those raises are based on program profitability or company profitability. We'll link in the show notes to our episodes which talk about escalation clauses so you can learn more about why this is important. Number three, know your value. Payscale.com, Salary.com, Glassdoor.com, LinkedIn, they all have great salary information, market data, but those are starting places. It's not always the most accurate. We would recommend that you talk to your network, get network with others in the profession, maybe outside of the profession, and professional associations to gather more accurate and relevant salary data. Tip number four, determine the other benefits that are important to you. So maybe you pay part of your health care for your current employer and your prospective employer is offering full coverage for you and if you have a family, your family. That is worth thousands of dollars. Base pay, incentives, stock options, PTO, pay time off, telecommuting options, all of these things, those are all negotiable. So realize at the beginning what is really important for you because a lot of us have been trained and taught that salary is really important or where we sit in the bit in the office is really important. But now post COVID, we realize that time off, living different places, having hybrid job opportunities, those are all important as well. So really do some soul searching as to what are the other benefits that are important to you. Tip number five, when this offer comes across, you have some decisions to make. Your first decision, do you want this job? What a waste of your time and a recruiter's time if this isn't really a position that interests you. So if you want the job, you can accept the offer or decide if it's close enough to what you initially discussed to negotiate further. If you're asking to change a lot of the offer, ask yourself, is this really a good match? Our next tip, if you are going to counter your offer, which you can do, if you're going to counter your offer, consider one or two critical changes you want and think about what you're willing to accept. 
So when you're going to do the counter offer, call the hiring manager and talk about what you love about the organization, what you love about your job, and what your concerns are with the offer. Do this very quickly after you receive the offer. A lot of people think that they need to wait and stall. Please don't do that. That's not respectful for you or for the company. But do your counter offer quickly. Ask for the specific changes you would like to see along with the business reasons for those changes. Be willing to offer some alternatives. If you can't get more pay immediately, can you get a sign-on bonus? Can you talk about when your raises will be coming in? And if the offer is revised, be prepared to accept it quickly. And our final tip, you should counter. In the current cleared employment environment, you should counter and ask for something, whether it's maybe salary or benefits. This is a negotiation, so don't be afraid to ask. We know that the gentleman might be more inclined to want to negotiate when it comes to that offer, but ladies, it's not the time to be shy. We'll link in their show notes to the episode with Mike from Raytheon Technologies, who gives us an example of a clear job seeker handling a salary discussion well. I really like the fact that we're talking about salary and negotiation of benefits because I don't think that this is talked about enough in the industry, specifically in the cleared community, because people think that they're stuck in sort of the pay bands or the labor categories. And I think that that stymies a lot of people's career progression. So I think people really need to understand that there are a lot more things outside of salary that they can be compensated for. Rachel, what are some of the things that people really need to think about when they're looking at their next job as far as what's important? You've you've recruited for a lot of positions. You've offered many different kinds of benefits and compensation. What are some of the benefits and compensation you've been really excited to offer people? And what are some of the things you're like, wow, that's all we're offering? Absolutely. So I think one that's so important really comes around that life work balance. It's understanding when do you get to do life. So what is the maternity process? What is the paternity process? What do those look like? How is the company progressive in their benefits? Are they ones that align with your values? Are they things that take care of you? If they're offering you, you know, three days of PTO, Is that something that really aligns with what you're looking to do? Or do you need something more aligned with three weeks of PTO? And I I know Kathleen gave it as a tip, and I would definitely recommend it. These are the ones that are easy to negotiate. Talk about what matters to you. Sometimes that base salary, it may be a little bit more prescriptive, or there may not be quite as much movement that a recruiter or hiring manager can, can make for a whole host of different reasons. But some of those are ones that really align with what someone needs in their individual life. Um, And it's certainly something that you should put on the table. So those are ones that I love talking about are just flexible time off. I love talking about, hey, this is how you can take care of your family in this way. Sometimes when I look back and I look at bonus structures. That's become one or 401k matches. I remember the the good old days where some companies did the 6%. Where I work currently, it's 6%. And it's amazing to be able to offer somebody a 6% 401k match. Um, but sometimes, you know, you see organizations that come up with, that's not a priority. So if they're not thinking about your future, you need to. So those are the things that you really want to talk about. Understand, seek to understand. Look at that benefit guide before you accept the role so that you can really understand what's on the table. Again, does this align with your individual needs and is something that really just is going to fit into your lifestyle and and where you want to go? I think the other one to understand, the other benefits to understand is that a lot of times people think that benefit structures are geared more toward someone who has a family and childcare and health insurance and things like that. But if you're really looking at advancing your career, what is the tuition reimbursement? And really being very clear about the tuition reimbursement is that in 
any kind of industry or does that have to be in the industry that you are currently working in? You know, it, it varies depending on the company. And also what kind of benefits do they provide as far as going to a conference to re-up your certification? I am always shocked when there is someone who has a tech background, but they have to pay for going to getting recertified and they don't get the time off to get certified and they have to pay for their travel. So this is one of those down and dirty questions that I always tell people to ask during their interview is... I need to get re-upped for my CISSP, and that is part of the DOD 8570. Do you give me time off for it? Do you pay for it? Do you pay for the travel? Um, so those are those are benefits that really change depending on what company you're part of. And I really like the fact that a lot of um, companies are understanding that they need to pay for graduate school. They need to pay for postdoc. We had one of our interviews with Meg Duba from Idaho National Lab and she talked about how they have tuition reimbursement for everyone in your family and it does it could be basket weaving it could be anything it didn't have to be something that you needed for your work so really spend some time looking through the benefits package and really finding out what it is I know several of the employers in the cleared space have started the 980 where you get every other Friday off and it doesn't matter if it's summer. It used to be if it was just summer or if it was the holidays. Now a lot of people are seeing that they can do this every other Friday off and a lot of people are really enjoying that. So one of those silver linings of the pandemic is making sure that people have the work-life balance and that they have the abilities to continue having a wonderful life. And I think really the core of everything we've been discussing, it's really a conversation. So when you get that offer, you don't just say, you know, just stop there. It's really asking the questions, doing your research, and kind of, you know, grilling your recruiter in a very respectful, kind way, um, but asking those questions, not just settling for here's what's on the offer letter, but asking about all of those other things and and having the courage to ask it and know it. It's, it's, you know, if you don't ask, you don't know. So make sure that you ask the questions, have the conversations and have the courage to do so. Well, one thing that we sort of glossed over is relocation benefits because mm. a lot of companies are looking for people to relocate. So Rachel, what should they be looking for with relocation? Because I have an absolutely horror story about when I relocated <laughs> from the West Coast to the East Coast and I only got $1,000 to move my family. That wasn't enough? What? A thousand dollars to move all the cross? No, I think it is it's again, it goes back to that very simple concept of ask. Let you know, let me see what does the relocation look like? What does the you know, do I get trips before I move? Does this cover this? Is it lump sum? Is it grossed up? Ask all of the questions. Otherwise, you end up like our sweet friend Kathleen that gets $1,000 and after taxes, she had a whopping $100 to move from East Coast to West Coast, which as you know, won't even put half a tank of gas in your car these days. So it's important to just, again, ask the questions, ask to see it up front. And people, you know, people want to know that you're taking it seriously. But again, I really think it kind of drives back to that initial statement of make sure that it's the career that you're looking for don't waste your time or their time. If you're just asking all these questions just out of curiosity with no intent to follow through, but if this is a career that really makes sense for you, it's one that you know you're going to thrive and do amazing things in, you know, really dig in, ask the questions, and do wonderful things there. For a handy reference list of these tips, be sure to check out the link in our salary negotiation tip sheet in the show notes. We hope that you'll subscribe to our podcast and join us again in the very near future. Be sure to get out there, rate, review on your platform of choice. And thanks so much for listening to the show. 